Thank you and, and welcome. Thanks for uh, uh, coming to, uh, uh, to seat uh, quickly and, and, uh, and effortlessly. Uh, I'm Bruce Hancock. I'm the National Lamb Supply Chain Group Coordinator uh, for MLA and the Sheep CRC and a consultant with Rural Solutions SA, a unit of uh, the Department of Primary Industries here in South Australia. And I'm based out on the Roseworthy campus, um, about 80 k's north of Adelaide. I'm going to be your facilitator for sessions one and two this afternoon. Um, in terms of um, um, uh, work uh, site safety, um, in terms of evacuation, there will be a, a first warning uh, a, a bell uh, where we'll just sort of stop proceedings and just sort of take stock of where we're at. Um, and if that actually moves on into a wailing siren, that'll be time to evacuate. Um, you, you'll be pleased to know, first step in the evacuation plan is go to the bar. Um, the, the, the empty bar out here, and from there we'll go on the overpass uh, across the main road and into the car park and then downstairs and into Mosley Square. Um, for your convenience, I think most of you will have found the toilets uh, at, at the rear of the venue. It's a forum, um, so there will be time to ask questions today. Uh, just ask that you make the questions uh, sharp and concise, and I'll, I'll just need to reserve the right to, uh, to park an issue or question and return to that at a later stage to allow us to move on. Uh, we have a great lineup of speakers, um, and uh, we need to collectively manage the time so they all get their, uh, uh, their say. We have a clock up here on the uh, speaker at the front, if you can just sort of work to that clock. Basically, uh, all speakers have been given uh, 30 minutes, uh, 25 minutes uh, for presentation, with a five-minute warning bell at, uh, at 20 minutes, and uh, time for some questions after. Uh, the first speaker for today is Hamish Chandler. Uh, Hamish completed his rural science uh, degree at the University of New England uh, and worked briefly with the poultry industry uh, and then in the AI industry for sheep and beef. Uh, he worked as a breed plan consultant at, and at AEBRI at Armidale for five years. Many of you know Hamish now for his recent roles as Land Plan Project Officer in 2009 and is currently the Sheep Genetics Manager. Today Hamish is going to tell us what's new and exciting in the world of sheep genetics. Please make Hamish welcome. Thanks, Bruce. Um, I really like how you explained the emergency procedures like it was more or less a done deal, that it will be happening at some stage. Um, anyway, we're, hopefully it won't come to that, but uh, we're all clear just in case. Um, so firstly, obviously, I'd like to welcome everyone here. Um, thank you very much for... Uh, coming along to uh, see what we've got to say. Um, I'm really looking forward to the proceedings for the, the next day or so. Um, you know, I think we've really got uh, a good lineup of, of speakers and, and should be some really interesting content for you. If there's anyone who's short on a seat or you know, needs a bit more room, uh, there's a whole front row down here that's not occupied, so uh, there's plenty of room, don't be shy. We, we, we won't ask people in the front row difficult questions. Um, before we get started, I just did want to quickly say uh, we are streaming the proceedings live on the internet uh, this year, so first time for us doing that, uh, doing that as a bit of a trial to see, see how it pans, uh, pans out um, and what people think of it. Um, so because of that, we actually have got the option of texting questions in, um, so either people who are at home uh, on, the, on the internet or people who are here in the audience and uh, don't want to stick their hand up and, and ask questions publicly. If you wanted to send a, a text message with, with questions in, um, that's all fine. The number there, uh, 0409 So if you uh, wanted to write that down in case you wanted to, to uh, use it later on, please do so. Um, we've also got it uh, streaming within the room here, so if people have uh, an iPad or iPhone or Android phone, I think Samsung and so on it works on, um, if you wanted to stream it to your device, um, Ian up the front here is the man to speak to for the, the link for all of that, uh, and it does actually allow you to um, watch the slides on your device, write notes on it and, and save those slides if need be. Right. so the first thing I guess that uh, I did want to just mention for the, for the day, um, most of you will already be aware that we've had a significant number of uh, changes within sheep genetics um, for the year, uh, and I did want to take the opportunity to, to publicly thank um, Tom Hook and Luke Stephen, who uh, have both finished up with us 
after quite a few years, and I think it's also a good thing that you know, they're still turning up at these things and, and helping out and having their input. So Tom's here in his own capacity as a breeder now. Um, I think he's quite happy that he doesn't have to wear a tie to the event this year. Um, and Luke's now with the uh, New South Wales DPI as their uh, sheep breeding technical specialist, but um, still fit time into the agenda to come and, and speak. So thank you, thank you for that. Um, so Tom finished up in, what, September last year. Uh, so we now have Will Chaffee on board as our new land plan development officer. Uh, so good opportunity for, for you to, to meet Will over the next couple of days. And Karis Jones has just started as the Merino Select Development Officer. So um, Karis is quite happy to take all of your difficult questions. She started uh, as Merino Select Development Officer Wednesday last week. Um, so she should be pretty well placed to do that. Um, over and above that, uh, there's also been quite a bit of restructuring within MLA. Uh, so there's been some changes at the management uh, level as well. Um, so Sam Gill uh, is now more involved in, in overseeing beef genetics and in uh, database uh, development and so on. Uh, Sam's also here to, to help out with the speaking agenda. Um, but Sam's no longer... Um, uh, directly involved uh, with, with sheep genetics. Uh, I guess he is more at a higher level still, but um, Richard Apps is, is back on board uh, in, in the uh, management chain for sheep genetics. Um, and Alex Ball has, uh, over the last 12 months or so, been general manager of the department that we're part of. Uh, the, the news there is that Alex is about to, to finish up with us for a 12-month period um, and he's going to be going and spending the next 12 months uh, working in industry with some of the, the major process, uh, processes uh, on a secondment basis for the, for the next 12 months. So uh, we will now um, have Jane, Jane Weatherly uh, in as the general manager of our broader department. So I think the, um, the, the really good news story for us over the last, it's more than 12 months now, um, in terms of uh, numbers of animals coming into the analysis, um, on the land plant side of things, obviously it's, it's quite a stable product. Uh, we are still seeing um, slow growth there, I guess, for um, the, the, the major breed groups, uh, terminals and maternals, um, and Dooney's also a little bit of... Um, you know, slow growth in the right direction for us, but um, the really good news is the uptake in Merino Select over the last year or two, and the growth that we're seeing in the number of animals coming into the Merino Select analysis. So, you know, I think that's a really good thing, and that's largely um, being driven by, you know, people out there in industry asking for, for more information. So, you know, things like Ram Select and Breadwell Fed World and so on, the extension work that's being done out in, in the commercial world um, is, is really seeing you know, a lot more interest in, in participation. So you know, we're now um, across the wool breeds upwards of 150 odd thousand animals coming into the evaluation a year. Um, also you'd notice in your little bag of tricks that you've got there um, some new promotional material that we've developed. So these have been uh, adapted from the Sheep CRC's Ram Buyers Guide uh, one of the things that was uh, quite rightly pointed out to us over the last little while with re reviewing our communications material is that there's not much for us to provide to you guys to then hand on to your commercial um, clients. Um, so we've got a range of new brochures there um, explaining how to use some of those individual traits and so on. The intent is that you guys, um, if you need information to pass on to your clients, um, can order some of these things uh, from Sheep Genetics, so you've got, got some resources there to pass on to your clients. Um, so what else is new uh, within Sheep Genetics? Um, we've done quite a bit of work recently with upgrading the website and so on. Um, I won't steal too much of Dave's thunder. Dave will be going through that in, in detail uh, tomorrow. But um, up, upgrading uh, the dashboard that's on our website uh, for breeders to, to be able to log in and access more information about their flocks and start looking at genetic trends, uh, things like generation length and so on in a bit more detail, start looking at what is, is driving your rate of progress. Um, there will be further um, developments. Uh, I probably should have updated that second point there a little bit. Um, some of that has already been done. 
Uh, and if you have a look on the dashboard, um, you can now access all of your standard uh, reports that get emailed back out to you they are now available on the website. So, you know, if you, you need to go back after the event and find details, they are all there available on the website. A number of other functionalities um, are new to the website as well that um, we'll go through in, in more detail tomorrow. Um, there's also an API that we have utilised, uh, we've built into the, our website, so other um, entities can interface more easily with, with the Sheep Genetics database on the website. Um, so ClassyMate is uh, the first uh, website that um, allows people to list animals for sale that can now interact with the API on our website to update information. So animals that are listed for sale on that website uh, every time someone accesses those, it will go and check our database and make sure that they've got the most recent um, breeding values available. Um, we've spoken to one or two other people about the, um, the interest in being able to do the same thing, keep up um, online catalogues and so on up to date, and it's now also possible for you as stud breeders to have your own uh, website or performance group website or whatever interface with the sheep genetics website to make sure that uh, breeding values, genetic trends and so on um, can be kept up to date uh, on your website without having to go and manually update pages. Um, Data Smart workshops, so hopefully uh, most people are aware now that the Data Smart workshops are out there and, and being run. Um, so Sheep Genetics and Debbie Milne have uh, developed the, the Data Smart workshops. Uh, they've been run at a number of different places around the country already, um, but aiming to, you know, help continue providing information to people about data quality, management groups, all that sort of thing, but then tying that in with whichever uh, software package you're using and making sure that it's really clear to people how to, you know, get that good quality information from, you know, your property into the sheep genetics database. Um, the sheep CRC are helping us out there with a, a bit of support to make sure that um, the cost of those is, is kept to a minimum. Um, if people are interested in data smart workshops, you know, it's just a matter of notifying us that uh, there's interest in having them in a particular location and, you know, we'll go and, and, and see whether there are enough other people who are wanting to participate to, to get something up and running. What else is new? Mate cell. I uh, know a few of you might be a little sceptical that mate cell's ready to go. We've been talking about getting mate cell up and running for quite some time. Uh, the good news is that mate cell is now there and available, um, uh, ready to be used. Uh, at, um, at this point, it will be available um, off the Sheep Genetics website on demand, allow people to be able to build the input files uh, to go into it on demand. Um, and start looking more closely at um, being able to, you know, maximise the rate of genetic progress for whatever traits or indexes you're interested in in your breeding program, and at the same time keep our inbreeding coefficients and, and co-ancestry, you know, which will lead to inbreeding over time, uh, to a minimum. Um, so it's there, it's available as of now um, through existing service providers who know how to operate TGRM, uh, and we will be offering further training for other service providers uh, who want to know how to use it as of uh, May with our normal um, service provider training program that we run in May. Uh, once we've got all of that established, uh, we will then um, over the next few months be aiming to start running some uh, breeder training programs so breeders who want to know how to use it themselves can get access to, to running mate cell. Pedigree Master, um, so Pedigree Master it has been available on the website for some time, but we now have Pedigree Master with uh, a mating module available on the website uh, so that people can start recording more reproductive details about their flock, you know, what weight and condition score were, the, were the used when the, the rams went out, what group were they being run in at joining, uh, at preg scanning, at lambing, following all that information through in a lot more detail. Um, so the uh, pedigree master with, with the mating module is now available off our website um, and Stephen is, is, as we speak, 
continuing the development so that we can import uh, CSV files and Excel files and so on with the uh, um, with scanning details and so on straight into the program. Um, genomic breeding values, so at the uh, leading breeder forum last year, uh, we stood up in front of you and said that um, uh, genomic breeding values that had at that stage only been reported as uh, RBVs, research breeding values, uh, would be getting rolled out more widely. Um, you'd all be aware that that has obviously happened throughout the year, uh, that the standard uh, traits that where we had ASBVs and RBVs are now um, consistently being reported back just as, as ASBVs. Um, so the breeding value you get takes all of that information, inclu including the DNA information, into account at the same time. Um, we're still reporting, obviously, the uh, single step eating quality and yield traits um, back as RBVs, but they're all available uh, within flock reports on the website so people can search for animals with you know, eating quality or yield breeding values that fell, fall into certain ranges um, and so on. So fully searchable and available for, for people to incorporate those into their, their breeding programs. Um, and also, you know, we can start accessing percentile bands tables so we can see where animals, you know, rank within the breed for those traits. Um, the million dollar question always is how many should I test? Um, I borrowed this uh, slide pretty much directly from last year's program as well. Uh, Stephen Lee's here in the audience today and Stephen Lee um, stood up last year and, you know, was talking about the optimal balance between uh, the cost of testing animals and the gain from testing across the, the range of traits that it provides more information for is around about 20%. Uh, um, you know, looking at the, the, the balance between the cost and, and benefit of, of uh, that information. Um, and we do need to be aware that obviously, you know, some of the things we're doing are unfavourably related to, to some of the traits that we can now identify if we're thinking about eating quality, for example, you know, increasing uh, lean meat yield through our selection emphasis on, on muscle and fat, we know has an unfavourable impact on uh, eating quality. So we need to take that into account when we're thinking about how many animals we test. So after the last leading breeder forum where we discussed that 20% uh, is around about the option optimal level over the last 12 months, breeders are using the 12K test, they are using genomic information, they are thinking about how to incorporate, incorporate it into their breeding programs, but we're currently sitting on around about 1.8% of the lambs coming through the system are being DNA tested. So um, the challenge for us this afternoon in particular is building a better business case for you guys, why you know, we think you should be making better use of that information um, and you know, how it might actually help your businesses over the next little while fully expecting that might develop a little bit of conversation later on in the afternoon. Obviously further work going on with genomics development, um, working with the sheep CRC uh, who are looking at um, you know, ways to improve the accuracy of those genomic predictions, how to do a crossbreed predictions for some of the smaller breeds that we currently uh, can't do much with. And uh, uh, still working with AGBU um, in terms of multi-trait uh, single step analyses, how to incorporate all of that information into the one analysis. I uh, already said that, but uh, looking to, you know, the extension message around it is, you know, where's the, the, the dollar value, where's the business case for you guys to start uh, using that technology more widely. The other thing we are looking at doing, because at the moment we still have those single step traits uh, that we're calculating in a separate analysis for eating quality, uh, lean meat yield and so on. We are looking at um, how to roll that out to people who aren't currently in Lamb Plan or Merino Select. So we can't offer them uh, breeding values across the full range of traits that we're collecting information for, uh, but we can look at reporting back just that small subset of eating quality and carcass yield traits. Um, so looking at, you know, how do we make sure we're testing a wide enough proportion of the flock to actually make progress for some of these traits? How do we you know, get a few other people involved? Um, that's one of the things that we're looking at currently. So 
Um, for this project, uh, we would be looking at making the 12K test available to non-sheep genetics uh, members for the, the major breeds, um, particularly Pole Dorsets, White Suffolks and Border Leicesters. Um, if there's interest in carcass traits from Merino breeders, there's, there's no reason why we can't do that. Um, the caveat, obviously, is that those animals will need to have some relationship to animals that have gone through in the information nucleus flock and resource flock so that we can identify those genomic relationships um, and we can make reliable predictions. Um, so the traits that we could offer them are lean meat yield, shear force, intramuscular fat, dressing percentage, carcass weight, carcass fat, carcass eye muscle depth. Um, looking at running that for a project, as a project, over a 12 month period uh, to see what the uptake might be like and what impact it would have on, on industry. Um, the process would be that people would need to uh, join sheep genetics as a genomics client, basically. Um, they would still need to order the blood cards and so on through the sheep CRC, go through that normal process, um, and we would be invoicing them under our normal small flock fee structure, $9.10 per animal. That will be reviewed after 12 months. You know, I'm, I'm going to be very clear about the fact that that is, you know, as part of a pilot project, uh, charging people at that amount of money. Uh, over time, we are going to have to reassess how we uh, structure our fee schedules to make sure that people who are not standard sheep genetics members are still paying their fair share of maintaining the reference populations and so on. You know, we've, we're more than aware that, you know, particularly people in this room have put a lot of time and effort into the data recording aspect of it, helping uh, get the genomic technology uh, developed uh, with input into the, the resource flock and so on. Um, we do need to see whether we can, you know, utilise this for other people who are only interested in taking a genomics test and not necessarily recording all that other detail, but you know, we also need to make sure that everything's fair and equitable. So that will be something that will be looked at in a lot more detail over the next 12 months. What sort of fee schedules will we have to have in place to cover that properly? Um, the other thing that we're having to deal with at the moment, obviously, uh, is the sheep genetics uh, management agreement. Uh, sheep genetics is um, managed under, uh, as a project between uh, MLA and AWI. The current management agreement is due to expire at the end of June this year um, and we're currently uh, putting plans in place to extend that for a 12-month period of time um, for a number of reasons. Uh, it will bring us in line with a whole range of other industry uh, targets and so on, the meat industry strategic plan and, and so on. Uh, will also line us up much better with the AWI funding cycle and uh, the work that MLA is looking at the moment around planning uh, for genetics uh, consortiums and so on, how we might be able to better uh, structure and fund research and development and so on. So I won't go into that one in, in any great detail because Richard Apps will be talking about that one very shortly. I don't think I'll even need that, Bruce. I'd better hurry up. Forum proceedings, um, so just to give you a, a quick rundown of, of who's talking and why, uh, as I said just, uh, just then, Richard will be talking about uh, what is being planned in terms of forming a National Livestock Genetics Consortium, uh, and Daniel Brown from Agbu is here to uh, talk about what changes and updates are going to be implemented into uh, both the land plan and the Merino Select analyses over the next little while. After uh, session one, once we get into session two, the whole session is built around uh, the lamb supply chain and you know, what technologies are going to be implemented. So Graham, Graham Gardner will be talking to us about uh, the technologies uh, that have been, uh, are being developed and have been developed and can be implemented into plants to uh, measure lean meat yield and measure intramuscular fat and so on. Uh, Sam Gill, in his new capacity, will be going through the uh, integration of uh, databases and so on um, and how that is going to influence you know, abattoir feedback, for example, informing the genetic evaluation uh, and how information might get from abattoirs back to producers and so on. 
Um, Janelle Hocking Edwards uh, will be going through the leading, uh, lean meat yield and eating quality producer demonstration sites that have been run, uh, as you know, give you some sort of evidence of how effective uh, some of the genomics tools might be. Um, slight change to the agenda, we have uh, Dave Rutley from Thomas Foods uh, coming to talk to us about what's the processor's perspective and what are they interested in implementing in, into um, plants. Um, we'll finish today off with an open forum um, around you know, what you see as some of these things might, uh, how they might play out, how they might impact on, on the industry. Um, tomorrow morning, uh, session three, uh, we've got uh, a session more focusing on the ewe flock. Um, so Sam Walkham, uh, who's from Agbu again, uh, will be talking to us about his work around um, including uh, things that influence robustness in our breeding programs. Uh, Joan Newton, uh, who's just about to finish off her PhD. Uh, many of you would have met uh, as she was going through collecting data for her PhD, um, how to manage young ewes to maximise reproduction. Um, our very own brand new Will Chaffee, uh, going through collecting reproduction data, uh, what information we need to go into to mating modules and why. Um, and Andrew Swan will be uh, going through uh, the work he has done in terms of developing indexes further to make sure that we're able to start incorporating eating quality and, and carcass measurements into uh, index values. Dave Ruby will be um, updating us uh, about the work that's been done on the website, how to use some of those dashboard tools. Uh, Luke will be re reinforcing that we have got mate cell operational and we'll be going through uh, the impacts that mate cell will have and, and how to go about using it. Um, and I'll be going through a few of the, the other tools that will be developed over the next 12 months. Um, and finishing off uh, tomorrow before lunch uh, with another open forum. So in terms of what are sheep genetics um, main aims over the next 12 months, um, I think I'd like to see sheep genetics starting to change focus a little bit um, We've always had as our major um, KPIs uh, both you know, growth of the business, uh, growth of animals and flocks in the evaluation, but also genetic trends, rate of genetic progress. Um, I think we need to start thinking about doing more with our uh, current clients, people who have been using the service longer term, and what can we do to start making better use of the information and start making faster rates of genetic progress. Um, so I think that's going to be one of the big things that we, we're thinking about over the next 12 months. Um, and more proactive uh, with identifying issue, uh, issues that people might be having. You know, what is it that is uh, affecting your data quality? What is it that's driving your rate of genetic progress? And, and what can we do a bit more proactively to help people out on that front? Um, I'm very nearly finished, Bruce. Uh, Things coming up, regional forums for this year, uh, looking at regional forums uh, starting in June. So Gundawindi on the 10th of June, uh, Wellington 16th of June, Ararat uh, 23rd of June, and across the Cleve in South Australia for the 25th. Um, and then uh, York in WA on either the 21st or the 28th. I know there's another slide that's up today saying the, the 21st since that came through of thought maybe we'd need to push that back a, a week or so, but um, that's what's on the cards in terms of um, extension work and uh, regional forums. And um, I'll park it right there and see whether we have um, any questions. So how are we from the floor? Any questions up from the floor? Yeah, perhaps introduce yourself, Deborah, Troy Fisher, Hamish. Yep. Um, so we do have a session tomorrow specifically focusing on, on mate cell. Um, so mate cell and TGRM, you know, will do very similar things. Uh, both are aimed at, um, you know, allowing people to, you know, maximise rate of genetic progress for traits in their breeding objective um, and managing inbreeding and co-ancestry issues. Uh, mate cell, the only difference is that we've... Uh, 
built the licensing costs of that into the, the database charges that you guys are, are paying. So all we're interested in is um, better uptake of those technologies and getting uh, a wider range of people to use that information. Thank you. Question out here. We'll use a microphone, otherwise it doesn't go on the live streaming. Martin Oppenheimer. Hamish, what, what's the uh, protocol as far as reporting back um, the DNA uh, or genotyping results? Because I've had experience where I, I happen to be looking on uh, sheep genetics and some of the results that I've put, you know, samples in from sheep, there they come up, but I haven't received anything from either the CRC or from sheep genetics. So, yep. and with some traits, it seems particularly weak. Um, they don't seem to be reporting. I know it's different with different breeds, but particularly with Merinos, it seems they don't always report them uh, on the database, but they probably could be on, on, there is actually some data somewhere, but it's not reported yeah. on the web. Um, we've just realised in the last week or so, Martin, that there was a little bit of a flaw in our reporting plan, that there was nothing to trigger for Merinos if they'd had genomic results come in, but not uh, phenotypes, not measurements. It wasn't triggering reporting processes to make sure that we were sending that updated information in a report back directly to the breeder. All of that information was being, you know, that was being included in the analysis, getting loaded to the uh, website, um, but wasn't having an individual flock report being sent back. So just come to our attention in the last week or so that we need to update that. Land plan side of things, that's, that should all be um, working properly. Very good, and we'll just take uh, one last question from the texting. Are we any closer to genomics for number of lambs weaned? Tom from Wanganelli. From Wanganella, yeah. Um, uh, so I don't know if that has advanced a whole lot. I'll probably have to uh, go and check up on that myself and get back to people. Um, you know, there's a number of traits where the accuracy is at that level where, you know, it will contribute uh, to a slightly improved accuracy on breeding values, but it's not high enough levels for, for traits to report just with genomic information alone. So there's a number of traits where, um, you know, worm egg count's another example where uh, flocks need to have some uh, phenotypes and other measurements in the system, um, as well as DNA information to get past reportable accuracies in that case. Thank you, Hamish. One more quick one here. Hi, Mr. Andrew Buffler. You mentioned uh, with Pedigree Master that you're doing more work to get condition scores in and those lambing groups and things like that. I presume you're working with other service providers like Sapien and Stockbook and things to make sure that that's as yep. equally as easy process? Yeah, yep. Um, so I believe most of those um, commercial software packages have the ability uh, to record that information. We've been discussing with them on an ongoing basis um, the reporting side of it to get exports through to us. Um, uh, Breed Elite is up and running and uh, Practical Systems and Sapien are, are pretty much there. So there's just a couple of last details to think about and I think we should be pretty, pretty right to go. Some of the service, uh, software service providers are with us today. Uh, yes. Yep, I would imagine. So plenty of chance to chat with them uh, during the breaks. Uh, I'll need to call it to a close there. Please join me in thanking Hamish for his welcome.